Hello and welcome to Circus Masterclass with our original backdrop, which uh, I definitely not steal from Games Workshop. So today we will pay no, bo no, no, no. Well, you went hands only, so I thought you might not need it anymore. No, no, I'm not doing. I'm not doing. I am not doing. No, no. This is this is outrageous. Who's responsible for this? Well, well, okay. So today we will paint boarding actions and we will do it a little bit differently because we will paint it really, really fast using Dirty Down Rust colors. Especially we will use these, the Dirty Down Rust pot and now for the first time the Dirty Down Rust spray. We will also use some verdigris. I will put a link down in the description to Goblin Soot where you can get the spray as well as the pots with a little discount. So when you're building the boarding action terrain set, be sure that you cover up the connection points with tape or build them so that no paint will get to the connection points and therefore make it harder for them to fit together. To prime everything we will use lead belcher. Be sure to make an even coat on every tile and don't forget the back side of the tiles. Be sure to prime the connection parts and extra bits and pieces also in lead belcher. So while I prime everything in lead belcher, why do you not hit the subscribe button and also the bell to never miss a video and help me out on this channel. Thank you very much. When everything is primed we get to the secret source and that's dirty down rust. But this time the spray. That's more of a filter than the Dirty Down Ross pot, but it works pretty well on lead belcher. As you can see, it's quite transparent, and that's why I said it's more like a filter. And we will use the Dirty Down Rust out of the pot onto this tile without letting it dry. So let's fill in some of this secret sauce and put it on the tiles too. Just grab a sponge and put it on every tile quite randomly. While doing this I had a little accident by spilling water into my Dirty Down Rust. So I had a quite decent mix of three parts water and one part Dirty Down Rust out of the pot. I hope for the best as I knew the Dirty Down Rust or the Dirty Down Colors in general do work quite well with water and depend on water somehow, but I was blown away by the final results of this water dirty down driplins. So with our water and dirty down accident, you should have tiles looking like this. And this is a quite good base coat to keep on painting. Let the tiles dry completely or use a hairdryer to speed that process up. And then grab some contrast black templar and a brush or airbrush and paint the lower parts of the tiles to make them blend with the boarding action board a little bit more and don't make them look displaced. As you can see I concentrate on the lower parts of the tile and also spray some things like vents in Black Templar. Now let's come to the dry brush everything step. Take Stormhouse Silver and a large dry brush and just dry brush the whole model with Stormhouse Silver. As you can see the edges and the black and rusty colors do blend together quite well if you do this dry brush step with Stormhouse Silver. After this step take Contrast Black Templar again and paint all the cables and tubes in Black Templar Contrast. Of course it's up to you if you want to use other colors like reds or yellows or stuff like this, but we want to paint it quite fast in 8 hours, so I concentrated on Contrast Black Templar and all the cables and tubes. This step will take a while because there are a lot of tubes and also a lot of cables. There are a lot of details on those boarding action walls and we can't cover every bit in 8 hours, but I wanted to paint the servo skulls. 
So I took Rocket Flash and painted a base coat of Rocket Flash on every skull I can find, and there are a lot of them. There are a lot of skulls, several skulls and normal skulls, and also in the corners of some walls there are hidden skulls too. So be sure to check out if you did not miss any of them. And after that, just take a nun oil wash and wash the whole skulls in nun oil to make the shadows pop. After that, take the connection parts and also wash them in nun oil. Yeah, and I told you a lot of skulls, almost forget that boy, I call him Frank now. So Frank, get some Rocket Flash and Nolan Oil too. With all those details done, I took the airbrush and white and sprayed over every light I could find and everything I want to make glow. I then used some Titanium White by Monument Colors to make some buttons pure white and also the eyes of the Servo Skulls and to enhance the white effect of the airbrush. I did not paint all the buttons, just a few that I want to be glowing in the end. After that I took some fluorescent colors by Vallejo or scale 75 and started painting over the whites. So if I wanted to make a green display I used green, if I wanted to paint a little yellow light I used yellow and so on. But I did not only paint the displays and add some decals of the Alpha Legion to make it appear as we hacked everything, but I also painted the buttons and red lenses and stuff like this, everything I could find in different fluorescent colors. Use the Forge World decals if you want to make it like I did with these panels and displays to add some variety onto the display and then go on and use different colors of the fluorescent range to paint every button, every eye of a servo skull and stuff like this. I use the airbrush to paint over the lights to make them look a little bit more shiny. For the displays I went with white airbrush, then the fluorescent color, after it was dry I added some decals and then in the last step I added a thin coat of the fluorescent color again to make it appear that the decal is part of the display. In the end you can see that the water and dirty down dripples made pretty nice rusty effects on every tile and the fluorescent color make the buttons appear to glow or shine. Water does really help to make the dirty down color play out its strength and show the best rust effect you can get. But the dirty down rust spray gets also activated by water so be a little bit caution when using water or highly diluted paints like the contrast paints or even airbrush paints. They might react with the spray paint of Dirty Down and do tend to activate the color so that it might shine through a bit. But the Dirty Down Rust Spray is really a game changer. As you can see I painted the whole board to a tabletop standard and it's ready to play. Of course I want to go back and paint here and there some more details or blend the connection parts on top of the walls a little bit better to make them blend more in. Right now they only got primed in lead belcher 
got a shade of nuln oil and some drops of a dirty down verdigris and water mix dribbled from above so they seemed like painted but i want to definitely use a dry brush to make them blend a little bit more into the walls overall i am quite satisfied how fast i could paint this for my first Omegon Thrust boarding action game with my Alpha Legion against the League of Votan and Tau. So I've got three games in on this board I painted in eight hours and the fluorescent colors really really make the walls pop and gave them some details and some parts to look at. Overall, I really only can recommend the Dirty Down colors for this set of terrain and also some fluorescent colors by Vallejo or Scale 75. So no excuses anymore. Grab some Dirty Down paints and some fluorescent colors and your brushes to paint the boarding action terrain pack that you can use in the 10th edition of Warhammer 40k which is releasing this summer too. This is the only rule set which will transfer from the 9th edition to the 10th so be sure to get some boarding action walls and paint them so you can play some awesome Alpha Legion games with boarding actions. I can't wait to see your boarding action set painted with this method and also I would like to see your boarding action patrol of Alpha Legionnaires on this boarding action set painted by yourself. So use the hashtag Omegon Thrash and we see us in the next video.